Hello and welcome to this tutorial, which is an introduction to IP routing. So if you're not switching on a network, then you're routing. Those are the, the two areas that a network administrator deals with all the time. So routing is used to send information across a network or between different networks. And it introduces a bunch of new concepts, uh, different concepts than what we covered in the switching area. Some of these are related to switching, as we'll see, and some are brand new. And all of this information is really important because it lays the foundation for us to understand routing and then to build more complex ideas and, and more complex concepts of routing. So we'll take some time to look at Internet Protocol, uh, IP, and that follows, that leads us nicely into IP addressing. We'll take a brief look at routing protocols, what they are, what they do, and we'll then take a look at encapsulation and we'll see how that actually relates back to some of the information we covered in the switching, the layer two arena. Finally, we'll take a look at what is known as ARP, the address res resolution protocol and how it fits into routing. And we'll do all of this in the context of a large example, uh, an actual routing example. So let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly is routing? Well, we can simply define it as the process of delivering packets from a source to a destination. And it's that simple. Routing protocols can get a little bit complicated, and as we jump into the more complex material, we'll see exactly why. But in terms of a simple def definition, it's really straightforward. Something needs to get to someplace else, a source to a destination, and routing is the process that enables us to do it. You know, it's kind of similar to you or me telling somebody directions how to get someplace in town. Well, it's not too different than that, but here it's on a, it's dealing with information with IP packets. So how does it happen? Well, a protocol is used, and the most common network protocol is IP, the Internet Protocol. You've heard of this because we've all talked about TCP IP before. Um, that is the uh, protocol stack of many different protocols, and IP is one of them. So IP is used to route packets from source to destination. Um, if you're thinking in terms of the OSI model, IP can be found at layer three. And if you're thinking about the TCP IP model, IP can be found at the internet layer. A few characteristics of IP is that it's connectionless protocol. It doesn't have to set up any kind of messaging with a neighboring router that is also running IP. And IP doesn't um, account for any error recovery. So if there's an error in a packet, IP is not going to ensure um, that a new packet is, is sourced and sent. Um, we rely on other higher level protocols to handle that kind of a problem. So with IP comes IP addressing. And IP addressing is different than the addressing we talked about when we talk about layer two and switch networks. So on a layer two network, you have a MAC address, also known as the hardware address, the physical address. Well, IP addressing is different, not only in its format, but it's also sometimes called logical addressing. It's not bound to any particular device. It can be moved around and also, when we talk about, and we'll see this in a minute in this example, um, MAC addresses, hardware addresses, are used locally, whereas IP addressing is used between network segments. And we'll, we'll flush that out a little bit in this coming up example. So that is routing and IP. Let's go ahead now and, and dive a little bit deeper into uh, some of the related concepts. And we'll do that by taking a look at a routing example. So this is our sample network, and we have two routers, and each router has a local area network, and between the two routers is a T1 serial line. So for our example, PC1 with IP address 10.10.10.1 is going to source a packet, and it's going to send it over to PC2, which has a different IP address of 192.168.1.1. So let's run through this routing process a few times, and each time we run through it, we'll check out a little bit more information. So PC1 has some data, and it's going to go ahead and create 
a packet, a layer 3 IP packet. And what that means is there's an IP header, and then following that header is the actual data it wants to send over to PC2. And this header, this IP header, contains a lot of good information. There are a lot more details to this header than what we cover here, but check out the tutorial on the IP packet for all of the juicy details. But for our purposes, let's just know that PC1 is going to put in here a destination IP address, and it's also going to put in a source IP address. So clearly from our example, the destination IP address is going to be that IP address of PC2. And the source address, since it's being created by PC1, is going to be 10.10.10.1. Okay? And so PC1 creates this IP packet, and it sends it over to router1. And router1 receives it, and when router1 receives the packet, it needs to figure out what to do with it. So router1 has something called an IP route table. And you can think of it as just a big table, and inside that table, are going to be a lot of IP addresses. And associated with each IP address is going to be some information on what to do with a packet if it's destined for each one of these IP addresses. So it's going to look at the IP packet, and this is where the destination IP information becomes very important, the address of PC2. Because router1 looks at that destination, and it's going to compare it, and it's going to start running through its IP routing table until it finds a match. And when it finds a match, it's going to say, okay, great, I found a match. Now, what do I do? And inside the IP table, it's going to tell it, well, this is what you do when you find a match. So that's, that's the routing process that happens on router one. And so for our example, let's say it, it finds a match and it says, okay, you have to send it out this particular interface. And here it is, this particular interface, send out the packet. And so router1 will do that. It'll go ahead and send it over to router2. And then router2 is going to do pretty much the same thing. It receives the IP packet. It takes a look at the IP header. It sees the destination IP address of PC2. And then it will go ahead and consult its own IP routing table. And the IPs listed in the IP routing table can be very different from one another. They can be very specific, so it could be PC2's actual IP address in here, or it could be a range of IP addresses, and PC2's IP address could fall into that range. So it really depends. There's a lot of different IP address information in the IP routing table, and Router2's job is to find the best match. In fact, every router is always going to look to find the best match in the IP routing table in order to determine what to do with the packet. So Router2 does this. It'll find a match as well, and in this case it says, okay, I, I, I have a match because I'm actually connected to that network, and so I'm going to uh, go ahead and send this packet out this interface, and it arrives on PC2. And then PC2 receives it, and then it will start to process the packet and all the information in it. So that is the overall IP routing process. And particularly with the routers, you could see they consult their IP routing tables to determine what to do with a packet. So let's go back now and take a look at the same process um, but let's go ahead and look at some of the accompanying information we talked about, some of the other concepts that are related to this. So we have this IP packet, right? Well, when this is created, this is an Ethernet LAN segment here. This is all Ethernet. And so in order to put information, in order to put this packet on there, we know from the other tutorials on layer 2 switching that we need an Ethernet frame. So this entire packet is then put into an Ethernet frame. And you know the Ethernet frame has a header, and it has the trailer. And so everything here, the IP header and the data, is all put into the payload of the, I of the Ethernet frame. And so that is known as encapsulation. And when you look at the OSM OSI model or the TCP IP model, um, this is what we're talking about. That's not just you know theoretical mumbo jumbo. It's actually really relevant, hands-on information um, about what 
what happens when data is created and sent between devices. So here, of course, the IP packet is on layer 3, and the Ethernet frame is on layer 2 of the OSI model. Okay, so PC1, it will go ahead and create that frame, which has the IP packet inside it, and it sources it, and it sends it over to router 1. Okay, so we're, we're going through the same process again. But this time now, let's focus on encapsulation all the way through. Router 1 gets it, and the first thing it does is it will actually take off the Ethernet frame. It pops it off so that it can get to the Layer 3 IP packet. And the reason why it's doing that is because we're talking about IP routing, and that's where the IP information is. It's not in the Ethernet frame, it's in the IP header. So it will take off the Ethernet frame, it will go ahead and look at that same IP header, and it will, obviously we, we went through that process, it looks at the IP destination and it consults its routing table. When it decides what it needs to do, it will go ahead and, in this instance, it needs to send it over a T1. Now, the Layer 2 protocols on the T1 are different than Ethernet. In fact, we could have either HDLC in this example or PPP. And if you haven't yet checked out the WAN uh, tutorials, go ahead and take a look to get some of the details on those two Layer 2 protocols. But then Router 2, uh, sorry, Router 1 is going to go ahead and take that IP packet and it's going to create a layer 2 frame as well and it will put the uh, the IP packet inside that frame and send it on its way to router 2. Uh, in this case let's just say it's an HDLC frame and so this process will keep repeating itself router 2 is going to receive it it will take off the layer 2 HDLC frame in order to get to the information in the IP packet and when it's ready to send it out, again on this Ethernet segment, it's going to go ahead and create the Ethernet frame, put the IP packet back in there, and then send it on its way to PC2. So encapsulation is a very important step, a logistical step within the routing process that you need to understand. Because um, if you're looking at a Layer 2 network, um, the IP information, the packet, is inside the frame. And um, accessing that and making sense of it when you're looking at it um, is really it's just critical in terms of troubleshooting and understanding how a network actually functions. Okay, so now let's go back again and take another look. And this time, however, let's go ahead and focus on um, PC1 for a second. So it created that frame, uh, the Ethernet frame, and it had to make a decision. It had to say, well, am I going to go ahead and send that frame to someone local on this particular local area network, or am I going to send it to somebody far away on a different network segment? Well, we know the answer is to send it to a remote host. So PC1 goes through a, a routing decision of its own. And um, we get into the details of that in a different tutorial. But essentially, what we need to know here is it says, OK, I'm sending this to um, a remote host. I need to go ahead and send all remote traffic to what we call a default gateway. And you might have configured a default gateway on a, on a PC uh, before on your own. And it's an IP address, and in our instance here, router 1 is the uh, default gateway for this particular LAN segment. So all hosts on this network would use the IP address. Let's say uh, it's dot .2, okay? So 10.10.10.2 is the router IP. And so PC1 says, okay, I need to send it to uh, .2. That's my default gateway because it's a remote host. I will go ahead and do that. Well, how does it know to get to uh, dot two? Like, how does it know where that IP address lives, right? Well, because I, I asked that question because this is an Ethernet network right here. So we're talking about Ethernet addresses. So after that routing decision is made, it says, okay, I sent it to my default gateway. Well, that's IP information, right? What we need to figure out is what is the... Uh, layer 2 information, the MAC address. So the PC is going to go ahead and try to figure out, well, based on this IP address of the default gateway, what is the corresponding MAC address? And in order to do that, it uses something called ARP. 
And that is a protocol. It stands for Address Resolution Protocol. And that protocol enables the PC to go ahead and query the network and to say, hey, what is the MAC address of this particular IP? And the IP is dot two of the router. It will get a response with the layer two MAC address, and then it will go ahead and it will fill in that information in the Ethernet frame, and then it will go ahead and put it on the layer two network. Router one gets it, and then we know the process. It strips off the frame, so on and so forth. So that's ARP. So the last bit we want to cover here is router one and router two. Well, they have these IP tables, right? And without getting too deep into the process of populating those tables, generally speaking, these two routers need to share information. And in order for them to share that information, they need to use a protocol. And so the protocol um, that they use is often referred to as a routing protocol. And there are many different types. You've heard of RIP or OSPF or IGRP or EIGRP. Those are routing protocols. And a routing protocol is essentially just information. Uh, it, 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 rather, it allows two routing devices to exchange IP table information. So router two will use an IP routing protocol uh, in order to exchange information with router one. And they share that information, and that's how router one knew that router two had an address, um, had PC2's IP address in the table. So they share routing information, and that's how they update their tables, and that's how they can route a packet from one side of the network all the way over to the other. Okay, so that is the overall introduction to the routing process and we covered not only the routing process but a couple of related concepts and they're important because you can't you can't achieve routing without these other concepts so let's go ahead and summarize all of the different pieces that we looked at so we we covered a lot of information and we started off by talking about some of the characteristics of IP the internet protocol and then we went through a few examples, the routing example, and we started off just by looking at the routing process itself and how routers use IP routing tables to look up IP addresses and determine where they should send packets destined for a particular IP address. Then we took a look at how encapsulation is involved with the routing process between layer two and layer three. And that led us into a discussion on local hosts on a, on a local area network and how they behave. Do they send a packet locally to another device on the same local area network, or do they send it to a remote host on a different network segment? If it's going to a different network segment, they use the concept of a default gateway, kind of like a, a last resort, just send it over to this, this particular device. And that was related to the ARP process, address resolution protocol, and how devices can use a layer three IP address and use the ARP process in order to resolve that layer three address to determine the associated layer two, the MAC address. And that was important in order to allow PC1 to get the frame over to the default gateway, which was the router. And then finally, we looked at the routing process in terms of how information is exchanged between different routers. And routing protocols are used in order to exchange information in the IP routing table so that a router can build a more complete picture of the network and know what to do when it receives a packet uh, for any given destination. Okay, and so that's it. That is the introduction to IP routing. Thanks for watching.